I'm going to show you how I built a photo diorama in just four evenings on Ron's Trains and Things right now. Hi, I'm Ron of Ron's Trains and Things, and if you'd like to see more Model Railroad tips, tools, and techniques, then be sure to subscribe down below and click that little bell icon so you can catch future videos. Well, recently, I was asked to participate in a local art show held by our local art council. Now, this show was primarily to show off the work of some high school and student artists in our area, but some adult artists of various types were asked to show some exhibits as well, and the council asked if I would be willing to display some of my model railroad models in the art show. Well, I thought this would be a lot of fun, but I didn't really have anything that was portable that I could use to display my models. So I set out to build a photo and display diorama to display some model railroad equipment for the show and also to be able to use in the future to take some photos outdoors in the sunlight. Now, I didn't have a lot of time to prepare for this, so I had to build this diorama in four evenings. And today I'm going to show you through kind of a time lapse and voiceover exactly how I went about the process of building this diorama. Now, very soon I'm going to be building scenery on the new expanded section of my layout. And as I do, I'm going to be doing a number of detailed videos about some specific elements of creating scenery all through the process. Today, we're not going to take a lot of detailed, focused look. Again, I was kind of in a hurry to build this, and so most of my video is kind of an overview shot. But I'm going to kind of walk you through generally how I did it, let you see the process start to finish today, and then we'll come back and talk about some of those details of the specifics as we get to doing the scenery on the layout very, very soon. So for now, I'm going to take you over to the lower level bench work where I worked on this project and show you exactly how I built this diorama. With 13,000 unique items in inventory and one day shipping, Midwest Model Railroad is your one-stop model railroad shop. Check them out at MidwestModelRR.com. Link in the description. For this diorama, I wanted to build something long enough to display a couple locomotives and a handful of freight cars, but for the sake of the show, it had to fit on a six-foot table, and I needed it to be able to easily be transported in my car. I had this scrap of two-inch foam board that was the full four-foot width of a sheet and large enough to cut ten inches deep, so those were the dimensions that I went with. I laid out where the track and structures were going to go and then cut some half-inch foam board to make the background hills. I glued the foam pieces together with Styro Goo from Hotwire Foam Factory. I love this product because it's foam safe, forms a strong bond, and is easily cut with hot wire tools. I weighed the foam down for about 30 minutes until it tacked, then removed the weights and began to carve the scenic forms using some hot wire tools, also from Hot Wire Foam Factory. I have several of their foam shaping tools, but my favorite is this freeform hot wire router. You can bend the wire to whatever shape you desire and carve out a variety of shapes. You can find a link to Hot Wire Foam Factory in the description below, and there you'll find their whole line of hot wire tools and foam safe adhesives. I do need to remind you to use hot wire tools in a well-ventilated area and to avoid breathing fumes from the hot foam. When the foam was cut into the general shape I wanted, I used a sure-form rasp and some sandpaper to finish contouring the terrain and smooth it down. This is a messy step as the bits of foam cling to everything, but a shop vac cleans them up easily. I decided to add a rock outcropping to the diorama. I found a rock casting that I already had on hand that looked like it was a good fit, so I cut the foam of one of the hills around it and filled in the gaps with some bits of scrap foam. I shaped the gully that went underneath the roadbed, so I used the Woodland Scenics Culvert casting that I had on hand as well. I cut the foam to fit around the casting, 
Then I took it to my workbench and cleaned up the flash from the cast plaster and glued it together with some tacky glue. When it had tacked, I reinforced the seams on the bottom with some CA. I colored the castings with Woodland Scenic's Scenic Pigments that I've had on hand for years. These are washes that are made to build up color in layers and can be applied over one another while still wet to mix the colors together. I started with a concrete color and then layered on some yellow ochre, burnt umber, and green undercoat. When they were dry to the touch, I gave them a wash of diluted India ink to bring out the highlights. I glued the culvert castings onto the diagramma with Styrogrue, then mixed a bit of Sculptable to fill in around the castings and the rock outcropping and to smooth out some of the carved areas of the diorama. I then covered the entire diorama with plaster cloth. I layered it right over the still wet Sculptable. One thing I'm careful to do with plaster cloth is I rub a wet hand over it after I lay it out to help the plaster fill in the holes in the gauze material. I let the diorama then dry for about 20 hours. When I came back, the mold was still damp, but I was under a deadline so I had to press on. I sanded rough areas with some medium sandpaper. Next it was time for a base coat of paint. I use craft paint like you can buy at craft stores or Walmart. I didn't have a color I really liked, so I mixed a couple of brown colors together, not worrying too much about how well they were mixed. Variation in color at this point is a good thing. I touched up the color on the culverts and painted the inside of the culverts black. I painted the rock outcropping with the same Woodland Scenics product I had used on the culverts. Here I started with a stone gray and then added several layers of yellow ochre and some green undercoat. When it had dried thoroughly, I dry brushed on some white to bring out the sun highlights. I glued down the track with Styrogrue. This track will not be powered, so I didn't use rail joiners on the one joint. I may come back and add fish plate details here later. I pinned the track in place with push pins for 30 minutes and then removed them. I masked the culvert, the rock outcropping, and the track before applying ground texture. The ground texture is finely sifted dirt out of my backyard mixed 50-50 with beige unsanded tile grout. The dirt will turn very dark when glue is applied. The lighter colored grout helps keep the color what I want it to be, like dirt and not like mud. I sift the ground cover evenly over the surface through an old nylon stocking. To adhere the dirt, I soak it with isopropyl alcohol with a mist bottle and then mist on some scenic glue made of one part Mod Podge mat, three parts water, and some dish soap. I apply these with a fine mist bottles because droplets will ball up the dirt and ruin the effect and can wash the dirt away. These bottles are made for hair stylists and have a super fine mist and spray when the trigger moves in both directions for a constant spray. I got these from Amazon and they come in sizes ranging from 5 ounces all the way up to 24 ounces. I'll link them in the pick of the week in the description down below this video. I used a paper towel to soak up excess glue to avoid ponding as it dries. After the ground cover had dried, I applied ballast to the track. I used gray fine ballast mixed with a little brown and black for variation. I applied it down the center of the track first and then down the sides, spreading it out to remove it from the ties and the sides of the rails with my fingers. To adhere the ballast, I applied isopropyl alcohol and scenic glue with a pipette. Apply these slowly and carefully so as not to disturb the ballast. I know many modelers who use static grass have gotten away from using ground foam as a scenic texture, but in N-Scale I like to use some fine ground foam to represent undergrowth underneath the grass. I applied scenic glue where I wanted the foam with a brush, then sprinkled the green grass and burnt grass colored foam on top. 
When that was dry, it was time for static grass. Now I've used several static grass applicators, but Woodland Scenic's Static King is by far my favorite. You can look for a link to it in the pick of the week down below as well. I started applying 2mm grass from Silfloor in summer and late summer colors. For the glue here, I used a 1 to 1 mixture of Mod Podge Mat and water. I applied the glue to small areas and then applied the grass so the glue didn't start to dry on top before the grass was applied. After each section was applied, I ran a vacuum hose with a stocking over it over the area to pick up extra fibers. The stocking catches the fibers for reuse later. For a wild look, don't apply too much static grass. It can come out looking more like a finely manicured lawn than a wild field. After the 2mm grass had dried, I applied some 4mm fibers in an autumn color over the top, applying it lightly and not over all of the 2mm. I just dabbed a bit of glue on top of the 2mm grass that I had already applied. After all the grass had dried, I applied some medium textured leaves and debris that I had sifted from the dirt in the yard to the bare areas. Some of these bare areas will have trees, and this texture represents fallen leaves and decaying debris from the trees. I added some coarse rocks to the gully. My biggest regret on this diorama was not making the bottom of the gully deeper. I also added rocks around the rock outcropping. Again, I glued all of this down with isopropyl alcohol and scenic glue. To freshen things up, I added some pinches of fine ground foam where the glue seemed to leave things looking a little flat. I again added small bits of glue to the tops of a few areas of the grass and applied some yellow flower material. I used Woodland Scenic's underbrush to add bushes along the gully and in random places around the diorama. I used a variety of other coarse foam and foliage material to add a variety of bushes, shrubbery, weeds, and weedy patches to the scene, and then glued all of this down with scenic glue. Gravel was added to the parking lot and the road. I applied some paper cutouts where the buildings would go so as not to get much gravel on the buildings and disturb where they would rest. I applied several trees, some small ones made from super trees material and a couple of large ones made from sagebrush. I weathered the track with Monroe weathering powders. This was the first time I had used this product for weathering track and honestly I prefer my airbrush method as it's easier to control. I glued the structures down with canopy glue as I know that I'm going to want to remove them later and this glue remains pliable and easy to remove. I added a few figures of people and some wildlife to bring the scene to life. And with that, the scene was complete and ready for display. Well, I have to tell you that this project was a lot of fun and entering into the show and allowing some people in the community to see some of my work that have never had an opportunity to see it before, that was a lot of fun as well. And I'm gonna tell you, a photo diorama like this 
is a, a great way to get some practice at some scenery techniques that maybe you haven't done before or don't have a lot of experience at. You can do it on a diorama like this in order to kind of hone your skills and perfect what you want to do on your layout before you do it on your permanent layout. And it's also a great opportunity to be able to have something where you can display some models or maybe take some photos outside, which is how I plan to use this over time. If you enjoyed this video, again, I'm going to be showing some more scenery detailed videos in the future as I do scenery on the expanded part of my layout. But I've got a playlist of some scenery making videos that I've already made, and you can find a link to that playlist in the corner of your screen right now. You may want to check that out. Also, be sure and check out those hot wire foam factory, hot wire tools, the Styro Goo. Those are some great products that really may be helpful to you if you work with foam and making scenery. And you're going to find links to that in the description down below, as well as my Amazon page and my Amazon pick of the week and tons of other great links. You'll want to check that out. Well, if you'd like to see some more Model Railroad content right now, check out the links on your screen. And be sure and join me each Tuesday as I bring you even more great Model Railroad videos. And I look forward to seeing you then. Hey, Lionel, check this out. Tim, Lizzie?